Today we're going to talk to you about the design of the collecting yard and the milking parlour. In the milking parlour, just as on the laneway, whenever cows are closer together, there is a possibility of getting feet damaged. A lot of lameness, foot damage, is actually caused in the milking parlour or yard area. And this may be either from poor management of the herd or as a result of poor design features that affect the cow flow and make it difficult to get the cows to walk in. The resultant lameness here is mostly white line injuries. Let's follow the cows through the milking parlour, highlighting in each area the most common problems. You don't have to fix everything to get good cow flow through the milking parlour, but here are some ideas to help at least identify the worst areas. Poorly drained or poorly maintained areas where the laneway joins the concrete will cause cows to stop and bunch up. The resultant problems include stone damage, foot rot, and the spread of digital dermatitis. This entrance is in the wrong place. As the cows enter the yard, the milking order gets disrupted. The herd coming in will split into two directions. The front cows will turn towards the bales as expected, and the middle group will fill the rest of the yard on the right. The last cows to enter will usually stand just inside the gate. When the first group of cows have been milked, the middle dominance cows move through the group of lowest dominance cows heading for the bales. This creates a lot of jostling in the yard which increases the chance of poor foot placement and subsequent damage. The size of the yard can also be a problem, not allowing enough space for all the cows. So let's talk about the space you require in your yard. How much room do cows actually need for this? With larger breeds such as Holsteins, you'll need between 1.8 to 2 metres squared per cow. And in smaller breeds, like jerseys, you're looking at about 1.3 metres squared per cow. One of the most common causes of poor cow flow through a milking parlour is slippery concrete. It could be at the bale entrances, through the bales, or at the exit, or anywhere in the yard. Wherever a cow is walking, she must have good footing. For example, a rubber mat as cows come off the rotary platform will give the cows a good footing. It's always best to start out with roughened concrete, but slippery concrete can also be roughened up using the right machinery. Every farmer who has effectively roughened up a slippery surface is amazed at the immediate improvement in cow flow. The pipework in the milking also needs consideration. This upright bar is shiny from here down to here. Only thing that would shine a bar this much is the hip of a cow. Once a cow has caught a hip on this bar, it is painful and she'll be reluctant to come into the bales. Simply by angling the pipes like this can solve the problem. In this milking parlour, there is no nib wall here to stop the cow's leg from slipping over the edge, like this. A nib wall, even a simple pipe along the edge, will stop this and the cows will feel safe. The breast rail is also too high. It's 900 mils from the breast rail to the floor. This is uncomfortable for a cow because it's at a height when the cow is in the milking position and it will push against the trachea or windpipe of the cow, or the point of the shoulder. This can be a powerful reason why some cows would be reluctant to come into this milking parlour. The ideal height for breast rails is somewhere between 700 mils for smaller cows and 760 for bigger breeds. Sometimes the end gates and pipework at the exit can also cause problems for cows with not enough space for their head. If a cow is pushed from behind at the same time she is exiting, she'll catch her jaw on the corner of the bar. This is very painful, and once it's happened to a cow, she'll never want to come in as the front cow again. The front cow should be able to stand comfortably during milking, and when the gate opens, she will just walk straight out. A good type of gate is like this one, operated from the pit. It allows the farmer to quietly close the gate behind the last milk cow without frightening the next cow. The sharp corners and slopes here are a problem. Of course, the ideal is a direct level flow out of the bales and onto the exit laneway. Foot baths should be in the exit so the cows walk through it every milking, even if it's empty. Like us, cows don't like electric shocks. If you've sorted out all the problems in the milking parlour and the cows still don't want to come down to the bales, maybe it's stray electricity. This most commonly comes from mains electric fence units and particularly those powered from the milking parlour. Another source of stray electricity can be poorly earthed milking parlours. Join up all pipe work to eliminate potential differences and never use electrified wires on backing gates. 
We've looked at a whole lot of design problems in a milking parlour and their yards. Only a few of these directly cause foot damage and lameness. Mostly these problems affect cow flow. When the cows aren't flowing well, the farmer tends to become impatient, comes out of the pit to gather the cows, or starts using the backing gate too much. This is when foot damage will occur. You can probably see quite a few of these problems in your milking parlour, but don't panic. Instead, identify the problems, correct the main ones, and just watch how cow flow improves and the lameness decreases. For more information on the Healthy Hooves project, you should visit the Dairy Australia website.